Hello out there to you. We've got this uh, perfectly competitive firm selling hay bales as an example. We've got workers as the variable cost. They're getting $10 an hour. Uh, we've got our fixed costs, which are $10, $40 a day to rent land and $20 a day to rent machinery. Added those together, and that's $60 per day. It's already done that. Those are sunk costs. Table below shows how much the owner believes it would be necessary to produce with different numbers of hay, hay bales today. Okay, so we're going to fill in all of this stuff and uh, let's use what we know here. So we know this is the total product output. This is the labor hours needed for that output. So in other words, if they need to want to produce six bales of hay, they need 18 uh, labor hours. Okay. Um, so let's fill in what we already know. We already know that the fixed cost is going to be 60 and it's going to be 60 on everything because in the short run fixed costs do not change. Okay, now in total variable cost it's going to be zero if we produce nothing. That's just always the case. And then each um, labor hour is going to be uh, 40, so I'm going to multiply 40 times uh, this number of um, uh, labor. Okay, so that would be, um, I'm sorry, 10, right? So then it would be um, $10, rather. $10 times one labor hour would be 10, then 20, then 40. And 70, 120, and 180. Okay. Uh, marginal product, this is the change in total product divided by the change in whatever the uh, input is. In this case, it's the change in labor. So this one's a little different. This one is we're going to change the output by one okay and then one hour of labor so that's one that's one over one the next one is the difference here so that's one again divided by the difference here is also one then uh, additional output requires two additional inputs so this is 0.5 then we're going to go uh, an increase in output of one divided by the change in labor hours needed to produce that. So that would be uh, three, so it would be 0.33. And then one uh, over five, which would be 0.2. And then one over six, which is 0.167. So what you see here, is declining productivity um, as they want to produce more hay bales. Maybe that's they need more equipment, they need more space. I don't know. The workers are chatting. I don't know. Whatever the deal is. Total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost. So this is 60, 70, 80, 100, 130, uh, 180. And 240. Okay, total revenue. Total revenue is going to be price times quantity. Now, in this case, uh, the price is always going to be 40. So we don't sell anything. It would be 40 times 0 would be that. Then 40 times 1 is 40. 40 times 2 is 80. 120. 180. To 20. I feel like I went wrong somewhere. Yep, I did. Made a mistake. It's not 180, it's 160. 200. 240. Okay, profit is the diff is total revenue minus total cost. So in this case, it would be negative 60, negative 30. Zero, so in other words, we're breaking even, plus 20, for profiting 20, 30, 
uh, 20 and 0. Now, we have this term profit maximizing. That's the answer to B. Uh, and what, what profit maximizing is, is I want to produce up until the marginal revenue equals marginal cost. But you can actually see the profit re um, maximizing quantity here because it's, it's the quantity where we make the most profit. So that would have been uh, four, right? Four is where we make the most profit, but we still need to, still need to figure everything out. Um, marginal revenue is the, addi the additional uh, total revenue divided by the additional product. So you can see it's increasing by 40 because in perfect competition, marginal revenue equals price. So this is always going to be 40. Okay, if you had a different kind of problem, that might not equal 40. And then marginal cost is the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. Um, now, the change in quantity here is going to be 1 on each of these. Okay, so um, I'm just going up by... Uh, whatever the total cost is. So total cost here is 10. Total cost here is also 10. Total cost is 20, or the change in total cost, sorry. The change in total cost. This is 30. This is 50. And this is 60. Okay. Uh, now marginal profit is the marginal revenue minus marginal cost. Okay. So this gives you like the uh, the addition or the subtraction from profit. So like the change in profit here is 30, right? It's positive 30. So this would be 30. Uh, this is also 30. This is 20. This is 10. This is negative 10. So I don't really ever want to go to 5 because I, I don't want to decrease my profit. And then this would decrease by 20. So again, this is profit maximizing because when marginal profit is zero, that means I can't change my quantity to make more or less profit, right? So that's all. The answer is also four. Okay, for a variety of reasons, I would just say because of the profit maximizing quantity. Um, and then graph the marginal revenue and marginal cost. Okay, so I went over to G algebra, and I. Uh, I already did this. So um, this 40, that's the marginal revenue line. Okay, so I just had it graph a horizontal line because regardless of how many units I sell, marginal revenue is always going to be 40 because that's the price. And then I had to calculate the marginal cost. You could just label that, draw draw some kind of label on there. And then right there, um, it's between 4 and 5, so that's why they're giving us 4.5 here. Um, but you know, four units would be the last unit where marginal revenue is higher than marginal cost. If I could split it in half, it's right there at 450. Okay, and that's how to calculate uh, this example.